friends. Uh, hello. Hi. How are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Oh my goodness. Hello. Hi. So today we're doing a get ready with me and I'm just gonna do a little bit of, I don't want to say venting because I think this is a little bit more than venting. We're kind of doing like a commentary video, but I just want to talk about influencers and not even just influencers like in general like the concept of influencers i want to talk about influencers in relation to this is a very orange shade on me i hope this <laughs> turns less orange i've been using this foundation in a long time i think this used to be my summer foundation but i don't go outside because there's a pandemic um which is what we're talking about today so actually kind of perfect for those of you that don't know we are currently in the midst of a global pandemic. If you are one of those people who thinks that the pandemic is a hoax and you think that it's not real and you think that it's all just a conspiracy, this video is probably not for you because I'm not going to be appealing to that mindset because I think that's stupid. So I'm just gonna be honest. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I'm not gonna argue with you in the comments about the validity of the pandemic. Like I'm not gonna do it. So that's just starting off the bat. I wanna let everyone who might be here for whatever reason know, I don't subscribe to that mindset. So, um, but today I wanna talk about the amount of influencers who have been posting on their social media um, as if nothing's going on. And I wanna talk about that and I wanna discuss it because I think there's a bigger message here. I think it's less, I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, they're just stupid influencers. <laughs> They're just, you know, YouTubers. I feel like YouTubers get such a bad rep sometimes. So over the weekend, a TikToker threw, I don't know his name, I don't care. There's so many boys on TikTok that all do a very similar gig. And I'm not on that side of TikTok, so I have no idea who they are. The only people I really know of TikTok who are like the really famous people are Addison Rae and the D'Amelio. Is that how you pronounce it? D'Amelio? Charlie and Dixie and all of them. Those, that's the only like famous TikTokers I know. This TikTok boy had a party and all, well actually let's start way back. Let's rewind for a second. Before this happened, Jake Paul had a party. You might be thinking, I know you're overreacting. It's just a party. Um, he had a party in LA around the time that Los Angeles was reclosing or considering reclosing because their COVID cases were spiking again. California had a really high amount of cases when all this first started, but they closed and their cases started to go down and then they reopened what apparently is too quickly um, because now their cases are skyrocketing again. So they were just gonna close California. I believe they're gonna close LA specifically. So Jake Paul throws this party at the party. This is just to add to the lunacy. They're using a crane to like hoist people up and down and their neighbors are filming it and being like look at these <laughs> doing this stuff but they throw this party tons of influencers there tons tons of influencers most notably tana mojo let me just do a quick vent about tana because this this is actually frustrating there's definitely a vibe of like low expectations for people who are like in team 10 the tick the the hype house the um the clout gang i don't know all their names there's all these like gangs and groups in california their whole personality and all of their content is literally based around being an influencer it's the strangest form of content. All of their content and vlogs are like, look at this crazy mansion, look at this money I was able to buy because, look at this stuff I was able to buy because I'm an influencer. Like all of their content is solely influencer content. And I'm like, how did you get so many fans in the first place if it, you, all of your success is based on you already being an influencer? I don't know, anyway. So there is a level of like, low expectations i think for a lot of these people i think a lot of people kind of feel like okay what did we expect <laughs> did we expect team 10 to take the coronavirus seriously i guess not but it still sucks but tana is a person that legitimately this whole situation makes me angry and i'll tell you why because should jake paul have been throwing that party no of absolutely not of course not and his apology which wasn't an apology he was just mocking people for being mad at him um so he didn't actually apologize he doesn't give a like whatever tana on the other hand the reason i'm so mad at her is because she has been posting on her instagram story consistently for like weeks she's out partying she's out 
hook like making out with people she which no shade like do your thing go crazy i don't care about your partying i care about you partying in florida during a pandemic when you live in california i do care about you traveling for the sole reason of partying yeah and i care about that even more because at the beginning of this pandemic this girl started a foundation she started a charity called the 1111 foundation that was specifically to help people suffering from COVID was specifically to help bring awareness to COVID. She made this whole video and this whole spiel at the end of her video talking about how she was going to take this seriously, how she's like understands the seriousness of this. She wants to use her platform for good. She wants to promote being smart when it comes to COVID. She did all that. She said all of that. And now you're out there not wearing masks, touching people's sweaty faces, <laughs> doing all of these I have to laugh I have to laugh because where is the self-awareness not only that but she's talked about how she's a lung disease so not only are you allegedly unless that's not real which is like why would you lie about that allegedly she's she's high not only is she out there doing all of this which is so incredibly irresponsible because if you don't have symptoms you could be spreading the virus this she's high risk what, I was just talking about this with my friends and I, one of them was like, I understand if she doesn't care about like herd immunity and protecting other people and she's just like a selfish person. But like, how do you also not care about yourself? How do you also not care that this could literally kill you because you are at risk? I feel like this party, this Jake Paul party, and we're going to talk about the TikTok party in a second. I feel like these parties are just a perfect example of people thinking, oh, well, this won't happen to me. If you drink and drive, well, I'm not going to be caught doing this. So I, nothing bad is going to happen as a result of my actions. There is this sense of, I think, young people particularly thinking that this is not going to affect me. And as an individual, as a person, if you want to think that and you want to risk your own life and you want to risk a bunch of other people's lives technically there's nothing anybody can do to stop you and we're seeing that i'll drive around to go get takeout or something and i'll see people like a party happening 50 people playing beer pong in their front yard and i'm like well technically there's nothing i can do about that and the other thing that i think is important to remember is technically there are certain cases where things are starting to starting to open back up and things are getting a little bit better like for example where i live we're on stage five of reopening and our cases have stayed very low because I live in New York and New York <laughs> takes this seriously because we ha we were like the epicenter for a while. We all know somebody who either had it or d died from it. Like we all know someone who knew someone who had it. It's It hits close to home. I'm not walking around seeing people not wearing masks. I'm not walking around seeing people not following social distancing protocols. Where I live, people are abiding by it because we have seen firsthand how serious it is. One of my best friends got COVID right when it happened. And that's the other thing that I think is important to bring up. We're going to get into the influencer talk in a minute, but I have to just get on my soapbox for a second. If you're having any ideas about following the lead of people like Tana Mosho and Jake Paul and going to crazy parties and just forgetting COVID exists. One of my best friends got COVID right when this entire thing started and he was sick for two weeks, which is what they tell you. He now also permanently has asthma. He was a runner before all of this started and he can barely run now. He has permanent lifelong damage to his lungs as a result of COVID. So this isn't just, I feel like people think it's like a cold and you're just sick for a little bit. Not only can you actually die from this, that's not even one of the only things that can happen. You can have lifelong damages and ailments because of this disease. I know because I see it and because I'm on social media, I know that there are people not fully taking this stuff seriously. I understand that. I know there are people who are still like out and about going crazy, doing crazy parties, not social distancing, not doing whatever. But it's like then they had this party for this TikTok kid who I don't even I don't even care who it was. They had this party for this TikTok kid. But it's not even just like Tana and Jake and the people you expect. Everybody was there. Like James Charles was there. Nikita Dragon was there. It almost felt like a who's who of influencers at this party with no masks, no social distancing. It wasn't even like an outdoor party where they could potentially be separated. Literally nobody was even pretending to follow guidelines for the sake of social media. Nobody was even pretending like safety precautions exist. And this is where I have the problem because I, I'm not dumb. I know that there are people not following things. I know there are people not listening to the rules. I know there are not people people not listening to their states or their governments like I know that that's happening but what pisses me off about this so heavily is that 
that you all, all of you, collectively, I would bet there were hundreds of millions of followers in that room with those people. If you think about collectively, Charlie D'Amelio was there, so that's 85 million right there or whatever, how many crazy numbers she has. If you think about collectively how many people follow the people that was in, that are were in that room, there's hundreds of millions of people, most of them being young, impressionable people. Most of those people who look up to those people in that room who for whatever reason have decided that they're going to idolize and look up to those people. And do you know what it says when you post on your Snapchat story of you wiping sweat off of somebody's face? If these influencers want to go to these crazy parties and want to go to these crazy restaurants and not wear masks and not social distance and not live this luxurious lifestyle that they are so accustomed to, if they really don't want to do that, fine. <laughs> fine. I hate it. But like, fine. If you want to do that, go for it. Fine. Don't post about it to your millions of followers. Why does anybody think it's acceptable to post about it to your millions and millions of followers that you're blatantly saying, I don't care <laughs> that people are dying. <laughs> I don't care that there are people on ventilators who are like 20 years old who can't breathe. I don't care about any of that. I don't care. <laughs> nope. I need to go out and party with my friends and be seen and live this crazy influencer life. I cannot possibly go more than three months social distancing and saying inside. I can't do it. It's too inconveniencing for me so I don't care anymore and I'm gonna pretend it doesn't exist anymore. You know how powerful it would be for the- this is my thing. This is where I always- I know I say this too much but I- it never ceases to piss me off. I don't expect people to constantly be using their platforms for like good purposes. However, these people, these- these- these people, if they even posted like one photo being like, hey guys, despite what people are saying, COVID actually isn't over. It's still a massive problem. Our state's reclosing because it's such a big problem. Here's a picture of me wearing a mask and social distancing and staying home to help flatten the curve. Do you know how much impact that would have? Do you know how awesome it would be if these influencers made it cool to stay home? If they made it cool to wear masks and social distance? If they made it trendy? They have the power to do that. You have the power, and I'm talking to all of them, like Nikita, James Charles, all of these people, you have the power to make it cool to social distance and to wear a mask, and you are choosing not to. I know all of you guys believe that this is real. On top of all these people in LA that are partying, it feels like it's everywhere. You have these influencers like Adeline Morin flew to Greece of all places because, and she tried to defend it. She posted this thing on her Instagram story because if you look at her Instagram, well, she deleted a lot of comments, but if you look at her Instagram, it's just comment after comment after comment calling her out for going to Greece and for like going on vacation with her friends. And she tried to be like, well, cases are lower in Canada and cases are lower in Greece. So I flew and I wore a mask on the plane and I, but taking a leisurely vacation, an international leisurely vacation right now, and not only just taking it, like why, here's my thing, <laughs> again, if you wanna take a vacation that bad, you're gonna like burn if you don't take this vacation to Greece. If you really wanna do it, just don't post about it. Why, this is what kills me because this just shows the absolute narcissism of it. They know that what they're doing is wrong. They know that by going to these parties, taking these international vacations, they know that it's not what you should be doing right now. They know that they're breaking guidelines. They know that they're saying a big F you to everybody who's been sitting in their homes for months. They know all of that and they choose to post it anyway because if it, you don't post it, it didn't happen. <laughs> just speaks to how toxic social media is. They know what they're doing is messed up, but they have to post it anyway because they have to let us know that they're having a good time and they're out partying in all these different places. Honestly, the Adeline Morin one made me mad, really just because, and this is, I'll fully admit that this is petty, and I think a lot of this is petty, but I don't think it's pettiness in the way people think it is. I'm, I'm being petty about this, and I'm being annoyed about this because I have been sitting in my house <laughs> Chris Clemens, Chris Clemens just did a great video and he really summed it up just absolutely perfectly. It's like you feel like you're the crazy one. Like I would love to go and have the amazing summer that I had planned for myself. I was gonna go see one of my favorite singers. I was gonna go to freaking Italy. I was gonna do all of these fun little day trips. My boyfriend and I had this plan to travel all around our state and like go to all these different parks with our dog because we have a freaking dog for the first time in the summer. Like I had all these plans for this summer. And I would
would love nothing more than to be doing that. Like I would adore the opportunity to get to just do all of the things I would love to do. I would love that. But instead, I'm sitting at home because I care about people. I don't want people to die because I am potentially a carrier. Like it makes you feel like everything you're, when you see stuff like this, it really does make you feel like, why am I sitting at home? Why am I sacrificing so much when nobody else is willing to? And it's not gonna change anything. I'm sure a lot of other people are feeling that way. It's frustrating when you've been sitting in your house for months and months on end and then you see people just blatantly ignoring social distancing guidelines. It is frustrating, fully admit that. My state's been reopening for months and I just started seeing my friends again and only in outdoor settings where I can maintain distance from them. We were doing freaking Zoom call meetings and playing on Discord for months. I feel like these influencers, and this is where I'm gonna kinda end it, and I feel like I'm just ranting now, but it's cause it's so frustrating. I feel like these influencers, they want the fan base. They want the fans. They want the influence. They want, the, and the reason they want the influence is because they want the money that comes along with being an influencer. They want those fans and they want that influence because if they didn't have it, they couldn't make six figures from making a 30 second Instagram story ad. So they want their fan base and they want this influence and they want to be influential because they want people to buy the stuff that they promote so they can keep making a ton of money. They want that. But it comes time to actually be like an influencer and influence people in a positive direction, influence positive change, influence people to do the right thing, when it, come time, when it comes time for them to do that, suddenly they don't want to be influencers. They don't want that clout. They don't want that responsibility. They want the influence until they actually have to be influences and then they don't want it. Then they're like, I just want to be a normal person and hang out with my friends and, and pretend that the global pandemic doesn't affect me. <laughs> And I think the sad part is, what, and I don't wish COVID on anyone, like I would never, but I think the sad part is it's going to take somebody getting sick and something really bad happening for any of them to take this seriously. It's going to take like a breakout of COVID from them going to these parties for anyone to take this seriously. And I think that's the sad part is that the only way this will ever stop and the only way they will ever take accountability and the only way they will ever learn is if something horrible happens. And that's so sad. Like think about how sad that is that we're living in a time where the people who arguably have the most influence over especially younger generations right now will only learn if one of them has something horrible happen to them. That's so sad. I just wish people I just wish people would do better. It's not hard. It's really not. <laughs> just stay inside. I would love to be I would literally be in Italy right now. I would love to be there. Can't can't be there. Guess what? You shouldn't be either, Adeline. <laughs> you shouldn't be out in Florida partying, Tana. That's all I have to say. I don't I'm just ranting, but I love you guys so much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media, and everything I just put on my face will be linked down below along with a link to register to vote. That's right. You can click on that link. You can register to vote and you can be part of your democracy. Oh my God. Sounds like fun to me. Um, and if you're not in the United States and the link does not apply to you, just make sure you're staying informed using your voice in a positive way. And along with everything else, there will be in my little social justice spotlight, important links to places to donate, uh, petitions to sign. A lot of those petitions are still very close to hitting their goal, so I'm keeping them in there. And yeah, I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!